We're learning much more tonight about some of those lost in a hot air balloon crash, including a Katie couple. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Jonathan Martinez and I'm Sion Rhodes. Tonight, investigators continue to try to figure out what went wrong on that flight, and we have team coverage of the deadly balloon crash. Our Haley Hernandez following the investigation from Caldwell County, but we start tonight with Bill Spencer, who's live in Katie, where the community is mourning the loss of that couple on that balloon. Bill. Jonathan, as you said just a minute ago, this is the deadliest hot air balloon crash in U.S. history. Happened in Lockhart, Texas, with this balloon falling from the sky. Witnesses described as seeing a fireball in the air before that hot air balloon plunged to the ground. So many terrific people lost in this horrific tragedy. At least one couple from right here in Katy, Texas. This may be one of the last photos taken from the doomed hot air balloon, a picture of pure tranquility taken just 12 minutes before Matt Rowan and his newlywed wife Sunday plunged to their deaths with 14 other people. I mean, Sunday were the cutest couple. Everybody rooted for them. They really were. I mean, it's she was the sweetest thing and Matt was, you know, adored her. Matt and Sunday had just moved to San Antonio to start a new life together. Another beautiful couple, Joe and Teresa Owens, also aboard that doomed balloon, were from Katy. Teresa was loved and cherished at the Tigerland Child Care Center, where she worked as a toddler teacher and was adored by her students. Then there's Paige Brabson and her mother, Laura Lee. Paige had just given birth recently to her very first child. This hot air balloon, a present, a Mother's Day gift from Paige to her mother, whom she loved so very much. All she did was just talk about her baby and, you know, bring her around. And I'm just so sad that, you know, her baby's not going to get to know what a great person her mom was. A collage of good people who wanted nothing more than to soar through the sky, all taken from the people they love in an unspeakable tragedy. Josh Rowan talking about his brother Matt and his wife Sunday summed it up this way. But what you can say is that they had an absolute love affair with each other and uh, they were together uh, when it happened. And amidst all of this grief and tragedy, you have the NTSB who is conducting a very thorough investigation tonight. Of course, we won't know the results of that investigation for some time to come. Reporting live in Katie, Bill Spencer, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Well, tonight we've also learned that balloon hit power lines before it crashed to the ground, killing all 16 people on board. Channel 2's Haley Hernandez is live in Lockhart this evening with more on that pilot who was killed in the crash and where the investigation goes from here. Haley? Jonathan, the darkness makes it difficult to see, but actually right behind me are those power lines you were referring to. They are massive, high capacity power lines that stand probably five stories high. And investigators for the first time this afternoon said that that balloon is thought to have hit the line, not the tower, but hit the line. And why it hit is what's under investigation now. In a new photo just obtained by NBC, you see the balloon taking off before it crashed roughly eight miles away in this field. It was taken by Erica Gonzalez. It just seemed they couldn't climb. They were they were stuck right above the tree line. And another photo. Friends say it came from one of the San Antonio victims minutes before the crash, showing the 500 foot cloud coverage during yesterday's ride that the NTSB is making a focal point of their investigation. Sports balloonist Bruce Lavorna spoke about that with NBC news. Would you have flown with a 500 foot minimum on Saturday? No. Why not? Uh, because it doesn't give you room to get out of what, things that are in front of you. But friend of pilot Skip Nichols says it's one tragedy that should not speak for all hot air balloon rides. And to take an accident like this and cast the whole ballooning community as unsafe, that is, I think is sensational and unfair. Still, this is one of the worst hot air balloon crashes in history. The official death count, 16 people. The National Transportation Safety Board says they are looking into whether the pilot filed a passenger manifest before taking off because balloons do not usually file flight plans, nor do they ever have black boxes. So the NTSB is pleading with the public to surrender any more cell phone video that's out there. Our mission is to find out what happened so that we can keep it from happening again.
The NTSB did tell us that they have recovered several recording devices from the passengers. Um, they say that almost everything that they've found is completely destroyed. Still, there are some instances that they were saying uh, where even the smallest chip on a device can have some kind of clue for an investigation like this. That's why they're still sending those devices off to labs for testing. For now, I'm reporting live in Lockhart, Haley Hernandez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Haley, thanks a lot for that report. Coverage of this story continues tonight on our website. Click to here.